Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Jay Miller with Miller Storm Roofing and Reconstruction. Before we get started today, click like, click subscribe, click the notifications button below so you can get more videos like this. Hey, so big topic that I'm always asked is what do I say when I knock on someone's door? That is a pretty broad question, but I'm gonna break that down. So it's really important that you know the context of why you are knocking on someone's door. Did the hail storm just happen? What was the size of the hail? What area are you in? Do you have homeowners in that neighborhood? There's a lot of context that you need to add before you have the purpose, before you knock on a door. Usually where people get the deer in the headlights look is right when a storm happens. Most people don't know how to respond. Most reps don't know how to act when a hailstorm happens. Let's say you're in Fort Worth, three inch hail, comes and it smashes, right? And you're new to this. What's gonna happen is it's gonna look like a zoo. All the roaches are gonna come out of their hiding place and there's gonna be every single roofing company out there knocking on doors. You guys are gonna be on top of each other. There's gonna be 10 business cards on top on the doors. People are gonna get pissed. And if you're not there early, chances are people aren't gonna be very receptive to what you have to say at three or four o'clock in the afternoon. So when a hailstorm happens, get there early. It's early bird gets the worm, it's an old phrase, but I promise you that you wanna be the first person to talk to that person when they're impacted with the hailstorm. Let's say it's, it's really early in the morning. Of course, you're gonna just be really speaking the obvious, right? Hey, Mr. Homeowner, I know you guys just got impacted with a pretty big storm. Hey, I, I'm already out here in the field today. Hey, I'll get it looked at for you and I'll let you know what's going on. That's pretty easy uh, if you're the first person there, but let's get into some more nitty gritty stuff. Let's say you had to drop the kids off at school or you woke up late or your alarm didn't go off, whatever the case may be, but you're out, a storm just happened in your neighborhood or a neighborhood and you're out there maybe 10 or 11 o'clock after a bunch of guys have already knocked this door. So if I'm knocking that door, you wanna already let them know that you understand that you're probably the 10th or 15th or 20th person to knock on their door. So I'm gonna say, hey, Mr. Homeowner, I know I'm probably the 12th or 15th person that you talked to today. I totally understand you may have already had your roof inspected and looked at. I know you may already have a contractor. I wanna assume all of that because if they say yes to that, or they say no to that, or they can say, yeah, I already had a million people come out here and look at it. I'm gonna say, hey, I totally understand. Like, you know, I know it's been kind of crazy out here. Let me get you a folder with some information just about our company and some differences about us. And now I have more selling points in that folder, which means that we're RCAT licensed, we're part of the North Texas Roofing Contractors Association. I'm able to sell him on the stuff in this folder. While we're going over the folder, I'm able to create more conversation versus him slamming the door in my face. It's called a pattern interrupt, right? So if they're like, no, 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 I'm like, I'm like, hey, Mr. Homeowner, let me just get you a folder real quick about our company. I'll be right back, give me about 30 seconds. And you run off, you get the folder, you come back, you start going over this information with them, right? And now their blood pressure's kind of starting to slow. They might start seeing, hey, like, oh, okay, you are a reputable company because anybody can be a roofer out here. And I always say my industry is saturated, but there's not a lot of competition. So you wanna make sure that you're doing your due diligence and helping this homeowner understand how to pick a contractor correctly. It may not be you. Like when I'm talking to a homeowner, I'm speaking completely unbiasedly. Although I am in business, I'm not coming here to be salesy. I tell homeowners all the time, I wanna empower you so you can make an empowered decision on your home. That's it. And then I can open up with another question that says, hey, when they inspected your roof, did they give you a photo report? Yes, no, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. If he says no, I'm gonna say, hey, it's really important that you have photos yourself of this damage and I will build you a photo report and give that to you so you can have something for your records so you know the condition of your roofing system. That can be another end to me getting that inspection after somebody already inspected it because ultimately, you don't wanna take somebody's word for it or the homeowner doesn't wanna take somebody's word for it. If they, if there's a million different opinions that you can get. But if they don't see it for themselves, how are they truly gonna know, right? So that's my in if they didn't get a photo report. Let's say they did get a photo report. They said, yeah, no, they already gave us a photo report. We have damage. I'm gonna contact my insurance company, but I'm not deciding anybody yet. Well, this folder is gonna help them make this decision, right? You wanna just keep that conversation going as long as possible, and the way you do that is through asking questions. People like to talk about themselves, so if you're asking questions about their home, it's called FORM. So it's an easy acronym for you to remember. It's called 
F-O-R-M. So you got family, you got occupation, you got recreation, and you have material. I always want to start with family first, right? So I'm going to say, hey, man, I see the pink bike in the garage. Hey, you, you have little, little ones? Yeah, I have a three-year-old, a six-year-old. Oh, do you have boys, girls? Oh, girls. Oh, cool, man. So how long have you been married for? Oh, we've been married for seven years. That's awesome. Have you always lived in Texas? No, we might. We just moved here last year. Okay, well, welcome to Texas where we get fallen, frozen pieces of ice that fall from the sky. Um, it's, you know, I know if this is their first time maybe going through the process, right? Like I want to ask them questions about the family, and that can lead into other ways to build rapport and relationship with the homeowner. Another one is occupation. Hey, this is a beautiful house, man. What do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a doctor. I'm a surgeon. I'm a this, I'm a that. Oh, cool, man. How long have you been doing that for? Oh, that's really cool. Like, you know, you get that conversation piece going that way. Then you have recreation. Like, hey, I see the canoes and I see that, you know, I see you guys have all this uh, fishing fishing uh, stuff in your landscaping. Are you, you fish a lot? Yeah, I'm a fisherman, man. I've been doing fishing for this, this, and this. So it's a way for you to build rapport there. And then, of course, materials. That's your house, that's the car, that's uh, their material items, right? Talk about those things. Because the more you're asking questions about this, the more you get them talking, the more you can build a relationship with those people, remember those things, bring those back into the conversation to let them know that you're listening. So it's critical, guys. The more you're talking about this and the less that you're talking about the roof, you're winning. Right, like I, I say, treat it like a video game. You have a scorecard up at the top right corner. You're building bonus points. The more you stay in these categories, the more you talk about the roof and, and all of those different things. People don't wanna talk about roofs and insurance. They wanna talk about themselves. They wanna build authentic relationships. So stay here in this form category as much as you possibly can and slowly bring it back to the business, okay? The more time you spend with that homeowner, the better. That's a little bit about how to run and talk to homeowners in the middle of a hailstorm. I hope this information can help you guys out when you guys are out in the middle of a hailstorm, out in the field, knocking on doors. This is just some preliminary stuff that you guys can do. So if you like the information, click like, click subscribe, click the notifications button below. I'm gonna be leaving more hints, more tips on how to be successful in the roofing industry. We'll talk to you soon.